Hello and welcome to another U.S. Cutter video. I'm Josh with U.S. Cutter and today we're going to be giving you a close look at the iColor 560 white toner printer from UniNet. The iColor 560 offers CMYK and white toner printing in a single pass. It has a maximum print size of 8.5 inches by 14 inches. Included for no additional cost are the ProRip software and also the SmartCut software. SmartCut software allows you to split a larger image up into two prints, allowing you to create images on textiles that are larger than the 8.5 by 14 inch print. Now, if you're not familiar with white toner printing, none of that probably made any sense. So I'm going to quickly cover the basics in a very simple manner. Laser printers do not use ink, they use toner powder. Paper is ran through the printer and then eventually it's going to travel through the fuser with the toner on top of it and the fuser just basically is a heated steamroller that secures the toner onto the paper using heat and pressure. Heat and pressure is something that we do extremely well here, right? Right? So some smart people have made papers that use different methods to attach the toner to different types of materials and surfaces. The classic is going to be your print and cut application that works with any vinyl cutter that has contour cutting features or if you want to cut them out by hand with scissors. Next up you have your single step papers that you will just print and then press directly onto the substrate. These papers tend to feel a bit waxy when you touch them because that is the release liner and or adhesive that holds the image into place on the substrate. Then after that, you have your two-step papers where you print out your design onto one sheet and then using a heat press, you'll take a second sheet and press the adhesive onto the back of the toner. The adhesive only sticks wherever there is toner. So when you separate it, you don't have to worry about a cleanup and it's ready for you to press onto the substrate. UniNet also has its own line of transfer papers for all types of different substrates that have been selected for use with these printers. Using these transfer methods with a specific type of paper will allow you to create transfers for all types of different substrates and surfaces of any color. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and open up the box and see what comes inside with the 560 printer. When you open up the box and start to unwrap the printer, the first thing that you come into contact with is a large laminated quick start guide. Hang on to this because it has the setup instructions on it. Underneath that we have some stapled together papers and this is going to be information about your warranty, some of the information about the free sample artwork included, and then pre-printed sample. Then stuffed down the side you have the black toner cartridge. You can swap this out with the white toner cartridge that's already located inside the printer whenever you want to do CMYK prints. This printer can also have cartridges set in three different ways and they also make specialty cartridges for CMYK sublimation printing, CMY fluorescent cartridges, then you have clear toner and then the new specialty cartridges, silver toner and gold toner cartridges for the 560. Stuffed down on the other side will be your bag of goodies. This will have a toner cleaning cloth, power cord, printer USB cable, ethernet cable, and then your RIP software and SmartCut software are both found on the dongle and you will install them from there. Now the software can come in two different boxes. It can come in a larger box like this or a smaller box like this. No matter which one you receive, they all have the same software and files located on the USB thumb drive or dongle, whatever you want to call it. There's still a few things that we need to do before we install the software. We need to pull the printer out of the box and start removing all the extra packaging. Once all the tape and protective packaging has been removed from the inside and outside of the printer, it's time to take a look at that beautiful quick start guide that UniNet included with the printer if you happen to misplace the quick start guide, you don't have to worry because UniNet also includes a copy of the quick start guide on that thumb drive that the Pro rips on. The thumb drive also has videos that show you how to install the software and then another video that shows you the basic use of the software. 
I've placed links to those videos down in the video description below that you can check out anytime if you want to see those detailed videos. So after following along with those videos and then reviewing the quick start guide, we're ready to go. I've got everything connected and our software's installed, so we're ready to start printing. Inside the ProRip software, we have separate tabs for each type of configuration the printer can use. When you select each tab, it gives you a visual example of the toner layout in the bottom right hand corner. And if you actually hover your mouse over that illustration, a helpful explanation will come up and tell you what each configuration type is generally used for. Another really cool feature that Uninet added was giving each print mode its own separate set of preset substrates. You just click this drop down menu right here and you can see everything that works with that specific configuration. This is going to prevent you from making errors or wasting toner and each preset comes with the latest setting already in directly from UniNet preventing you from wasting toner and papers with test prints. So for my first examples I will be creating a few prints for these lovely shirts that our friends over at Sanmar sent to me. To do this we're going to be using the overprint method on the iColor 560 standard two-step papers. Overprint layers white on top of the CMY toners, allowing your colors to have a nice pop on dark surfaces. This is the mode that most of our customers will use because they want to create transfers for dark substrates. The software is nice and easy to use. You can just drag and drop your files into the program like so. I mainly work with .png files and .pdf files, and if it's a single page, it will just load it onto the screen with the preview and you can just adjust and move it around on the page. The image also imports mirrored and shows up that way in the preview. So maybe you're wondering, what if I have a PDF file that has two pages? For example, you split something. Well, it's going to pop up with this little dialog box asking you which page you want to import and stuff. I want both, so I'll just will leave all selected and then hit apply. When you load in a two page PDF file, it will only show one page at a time. You will need to go down to the job tab in the bottom right hand corner and change the pages as well as set the job to the correct media type. You can also invert an image and then adjust the rasterization by clicking the color adjust button from here too. Then you want to head over to the page tab and make sure you have the correct media size set. Allow yourself to edit the layout if you want. Set the number of copies. Choose the printing source and output quality. Then the tab next to that will allow us to adjust settings for new items placed inside the queue. For a detailed look at the Pro Rip, Check the video link down in the video description below, but these settings look good, so I'm just going to make one more adjustment before we send it to the printer. I want to put them on a black shirt, and I can get a much softer feeling transfer that will last much longer if I just pull the black out so that it uses the shirt color and uses less toner. To do this, I need to select the design in the queue over here on the left side and then click my right mouse button to open up a drop down menu. I want to scroll down inside this drop down menu and then select production plugins. Inside the production plugins, I want to select knock me black out. This brings up a pop up window that will have a preview inside of it and a couple slide bars so that I can adjust them until I have the result of my liking. If I was using a different color shirt, I could use the knock the color out, this other plugin here, and then I could, you know, do the same thing with another design. Combine this with the rasterization feature and you have a nice image that can hold up 30 plus washes with ease using this 560 standard two-step paper. Now before I go, I want to talk a little bit about the transfer paper. Each paper has a different durability and different wash instructions. It's always a good move to review the paper's instruction sheets before you make your purchase. You will also want to make sure that you have some craft or parchment paper on hand when working with laser transfers. You don't want to get the toner on your heat press or any of the excess adhesive on it either. 
Toner will also stain your nonstick heat press sheets, and you also want to make sure you have parchment paper for finishing presses when you're pressing onto any type of textiles. If you have any sales related questions or are looking for sales rep to help you with your purchase, you can reach them directly at 425-481-3555 during normal business hours. And you can find these posted at our website, www.uscutter.com. You can also email them directly at sales at uscutter.com and they will help you out as soon as they get to that email. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and you have yourself a wonderful day.